Hey there, everybody. Today, we are going to play around with blending multiple images together, really kind of like doing the traditional photo bash, but using Invoke in the AI to kind of get the resulting image a little bit more aligned with what we want. We're gonna really go through the workflow of how do we composite something into an image? How do we get colors to match? How do we get lighting to match? But we'll really just go through some of the techniques and thoughts about how you can composite something. And really, in some cases, compositing can be almost like an exploratory workflow. How might this look if we composite a few things together and try to really get something that wasn't there before? We're going to start today with let's just do some photorealism. I know a lot of people kind of like say that we don't do enough photography. And so we're going to try doing that today. We're going to work on that. I'm going to pull up this and I'm just going to give myself some stuff to work with. An empty desert, dunes, sandy, sunny. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to outpaint a little bit over on the left-hand side. You know, I think we don't touch on outpainting a lot. What I like to do is just highlight how this works. We'll do this kind of like basic out painting and then we'll try to blend stuff together. When you have an empty area, it is going to take whatever is inside of the bounding box that has color and it's going to kind of try to imagine what those colors might be. Denoising strength at zero will show us what those imagined colors are. It's basically filling it in with the kind of like best guess at what those colors might look like. We can see, you know, it's got some colors, but it kind of increasingly fades into nothingness. If we turn that denoising strength up, we'll see that it kind of reimagines this and tries to make it fit into the image. It does pull a lot of this kind of like gray and it's starting to create like this gray shadowy area. That is kind of how we're out painting. And so I might just do that handful of times and see if we can get a nice little bit of a scene going on here. I don't know that it makes a ton of sense, but you know, it works. If you ever find that there's like a little bit of a seam when you do it, you can always come back in and in paint those areas. So we'll do a little bit of that there and just let those come together in a beautiful seamless way. And then I'm going to do something completely different in a different part of our canvas. So I'm going to take this over here and I am going to do a real estate listing, mid-century modern house, exterior architecture, photography. I'm going to create from the bounding box a new control layer. I'm going to move that control layer over here. I'm going to do a depth map to get this kind of like angled perspective. We'll see if I can get this to like mimic the perspective a little bit. We'll see. Look at those. It even got the depth of that little piece there. I'm going to outpaint this thing. Imagine the rest of that. We got some weird colors there. Kind of like went off into the side of the house. If you ever find that the outpainting isn't really doing the same kind of extension that you would expect, in this case, I think I'm using llama and it's just kind of like making this a little bit gray and it's not really what I'm looking for. What you can do is you can just manually color in that area and then use your in paint mask as well. So I'm just going to draw with full opacity here. Uh, this is better. This is more what I was going for. Okay. Really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it to like cut off the end of the house. And so I'm going to roll with this one, I am going to draw in some of those, some of the tops of this. And then we'll in paint those pieces and let it out paint the rest. I'm going to go with this. So I am now going to cut most of this out. I actually didn't really want all of this stuff. I'm just trying to get a little bit of like a house. And so I've merged all of that together. I am deleting out our base house. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of like select the parts that I want. And I'm taking the core essence of this house here. And now we're going to take this thing over here and we're going to transform it a little bit. Maybe we'll do this on this side over here because I think that part, part of this is it's like just not quite the same perspective. And so I'm kind of str struggling with that. I'm probably going to give the AI some freedom because I just want to like get a decent looking image. So I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to copy the raster layer to a new control layer, get rid of my old depth map, and I'm going to do a contour on this. One thing that you'll notice is because my raster layer, it's just this one piece, it actually finds the edges where there's a transparency. 
and it uses that as an edge. I don't really want that. And so I'm actually going to, instead of just doing this one raster layer as a convert, I'm going to merge all of the visible layers into one. And then I'm going to convert that to a control layer. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me this like general control layer that's a replication of all of the lines that are in my existing image. But when we're doing this type of composition and we have drastically different lighting, which we do in this regard, we're actually going to want to allow the AI to like really reimagine a lot of the lighting and a lot of the colors. I'm going to merge all of our raster layers here. And then I am going to delete everything underneath it. So it's really just one raster layer now. And I'm going to turn this off because I want to see what we get. And then I'm going to come back. And now that we've kind of composited that shape in, I am going to say a real estate listing, mid-century modern house in the middle of the desert, sandy dunes in the background. So I'm kind of compositing this almost for just the map or the control layer. This is kind of in some circles called map bashing, right? And so we're, we're using this as a way to blend these two concepts together and allow it to imagine something else. So we're going to see what we get. Do I like it? Largely, I do. I don't know what happened over here. I think maybe I got some extra stuff in the control layer. It's kind of cool. What I might do is I'm going to accept that. I'm going to bring it in a little bit. And I'm going to crop both sides of this to get tighter look and feel here. I'm going to bring down the contour detection and I'm going to allow it to just kind of transform this a little bit more. I kind of like the original a little bit better. The colors, the colors pop a little bit more, but I'm going to take this one anyways. So if we look at our original raster layer that we kind of map bashed into this, you can see where we were able to retain a lot of the core conceptual structure. You see the concept here of how it's able to take these shapes and the ideas of these shapes and the concepts and kind of unify them in a more seamless way. But you can see how in some ways this is almost like a AI collaging of some sort. And you're kind of using the control layers to take the collaged piece and give enough guidance and structure that you can recreate an entirely new image from that new structure. So this is a fun creative technique. If you have an eye for good perspectives, especially if you're an artist and you draw in your own shapes and are compositing with your own stuff, the power is very, very, very fun to play with. So I'm going to close this one out. We're going to do some like a concept art composition. We'll see kind of how to do this with different style and kind of a different aesthetic. We'll also see some of the different things that happen when you do that. Well, I like this idea. Space Cantina, maybe. Space Cantina, Southwestern aesthetic, science fiction, empty, negative prompt, people, environment, art, work. I'm going to flatten this prompt and see. We don't need intense action. We don't need high fantasy. I uh, don't need tabletop role-playing artwork. I think we're going to try this. Okay. And that's space cantina, Jason. This is more like a fast, casual space cantina. Hey, we're going to go with that. We're going to go fast, casual space cantina. Say it five times fast. Fast, casual space cantina. 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 And we are going to now come up with our character over here on this kind of other area. White background. And then, you know, we've talked about this technique in the past. Kind of what I'm doing here is biasing it to create a character in the middle of this white blob. I'm going to use a very high denoising strength and I am going to take this stuff out. So anyways, I pull it out because I don't want it to have that wild style that I have been using. I'm going to go in and say extraterrestrial merchant character, squid light head, orbs for eyes. I don't think it's going to really get what I'm going going for up here, but we're going to give it a shot anyways. We'll see what we get. Look at that. We like that. So I'm going to accept that. I'm going to select object and pull out this character. It's got some nice symmetry to it. We'll apply that. And I'm going to take that one out and do some cleanup in a second. But then I'm going to do an extraterrestrial enforcer character and a head war torn space armor. We'll see if we can get that. Look at that guy. That guy's kind of cool. I may tweak it a little bit, but I kind of like this like very angry look. This might be, this is definitely too high. It's a panda predator hybrid. Yeah, it is. 
Oh, yeah, look at that. We got our angry little panda head. We're going to merge that down. And then we're going to select the panda character out of here. And we're going to apply that and pull that over here as well. So now we've got our composition. We are going to erase our lovely white blob over here on the right and move back to our main spot. Now we are going to figure out how to get this like composed in a meaningful way. So let's do this. I think he's going to go behind. We might even flip him over so that he's kind of like behind in that regard. Yeah, that's perfect right there. Uh, so now we've got kind of like our handle enforcer and our merchant. We're going to merge it. We're going to, um, we're going to convert this to a control layer. We're going to turn that to scribble mode. For the sake of just showing how this might work, I am going to try to pop this stuff out real quick. And then we're going to end a space alien merchant. We're going to try this with a little bit of a lower denoise and see if we maintain our nudely appendage. We did. Face on our panda guy got a little bit funky. But you can see what's happening is like, because we're doing an entire generation that uses the control and we're kind of blending it all together using the denoising, everything kind of gets closer to the same style. Even if some of the details are off, that's okay because we can actually control for that. But we're going to kind of like see how much of this we like. There's some things I like in our original that are just better. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit more and try one more time with a lower denoise and we'll see what that does for us. Okay. I'm good with this. I think we need to do a little bit of detailing here, but there's some cool highlights that it's adding over here. Cause it's kind of blending that back into the shape, getting a little bit of highlights on some of these noodly appendages as well. Yeah, I think we're okay. I am going to do something though. So I'm going to accept this. But there are details that I liked from our original, namely the face of our panda. So I'm going to come in and erase what it did to our little panda man's face. And then I am going to maybe just do a little bit of end painting on the face here. Panda, enforcer, and we'll just do a little bit zoomed in in painting. It's looking nice. Look at that. Really gives it some nice details. We'll accept that. I mean, overall, I can't say like I'm too dissatisfied with this. It feels pretty good. We're going to crop everything to the bounding box, maybe even a little bit further in. And now we've got kind of our little our little scene here. We'll hide our control layer so we can kind of peek at that. Let's see, look at that. We got our little like alien dude or panda enforcer behind it. Now we've kind of composited that scene together. This is another example of how you can bring things in and really kind of like pull together something pretty quickly right now we've got like a little concept scene we've got this alien character it's got some cool noodly appendages and like alien braids let's give this squid space alien merchant we'll do some in painting on some of these details we're just keeping that control net in place because it keeps everything on the rails and close to what we had if you look at this we're getting some like nice touches on the skin and the flesh of the alien you've got the before it's a little bit grainy it's a little bit chunky when we're doing this painted deep in painting we're getting these nice nice blends and gradients on the skin it's kind of creating this texture of it's almost moist it's a real squid like alien looking thing and we can continue to do that you know we can go around with this new com composition so we'll give that a shot so i did this on the other tentacle things and we got that same kind of like juicy effect we like that kind of blends it in gives it some love we're gonna do this on our armor as well extraterrestrial panda armor enforcer dude and we're going to just come in and touch up some of these armor pieces that look like they could use some nice detailing I'm going to amp up the denoising strength. Yeah, look at that. I like that. It's adding some nice texture to this steel armor. It doesn't look as flat. It's got a little bit of depth. Honestly, the most important thing that you can do to really add the depth and the quality to a generation is to spend the time going in and paying attention to the details. You can get a quick concept, but if you're going to work on this as like, I'm trying to get to the 90% of a finished asset, 
you really want to spend the time focusing on this, but this is a cool way to get some more details and kind of pull that out of the AI model. So we're going to take that. We're going to call that a finished asset. So with that, I'll say thank you to everybody for the session today. We got to play around with a couple of different styles, some cool ideas, some cool ways to play around with Invoke. As always, we'll see you next time. I hope you learned something today. Take care. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.